Hello and welcome to the Reflecting Light Show. I am your host, April Rogers, and I am delighted that you are here. We have a really special guest with us today, Jill Dasher. She's in from North Carolina, and we have so many wonderful things to discuss. So welcome, Jill. Thank I'm you. so glad that you are here. We are both mentors for Sadie Robertson Huff's community, the LO sister, and we have served alongside each other in that capacity for a while. You're actually family with them, and so I kind of follow in your footsteps a little bit in that oh, area. I know about that. No, <laughs> yes, it's been such a, you know, it's just been such an awesome ministry to get to be a part of. It. You know, know, those girls just have a heart for the Lord, and you know, it's funny, we're mentors, but I many times feel like I'm learning from these young girls. Me too. Like, Me too. And, you know, uh-huh. so it's 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 a blessing. It really, really is. And it's so necessary and needed because oh these goodness. girls are up against things that you and I didn't even have to deal with when we were kids. It is a different time. I would have thrived in a community like this. Yeah. When I was like if that age, if I would have had a community of people that I could reach out to, mentors that were gonna tell me the truth you know, right. in a loving and godly way, like I, it would have been, it would have been amazing. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You're an author. We're going to talk about your book a little bit later um, about what you wrote, because I know that that is so impactful and it's hard to do because yes. I, I've been in <laughs> you those know, shoes too. You know, yes. yes. Uh, Actually, we, I don't know if this was where we initially met, mm-hmm. but connected at a writer's conference we in sure Nashville. Did. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, we did. Like several years ago. Yes, so Amy McConnell's yeah. Writer's Fest. It was, yeah, we were right both working on our books. Um, yeah, that's, that's right. So cool. That's right. Okay, but let's just start a little bit back at the beginning. So tell us about you and a little bit about your journey. Oh, wow, that's like, that, how long? How long I know, have I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm a wife and mom. Mm-hmm. Um, we have five kids. Um, full house, like just complete full house. We're in a season of my firstborn, we just moved her into her dorm the other day. So we're like in this complete, like about to enter this season that we just thought would never come. So just Mm -hmm. young parents that are watching, I promise you, like you're going to blink and you're going to be moving your child into college and you're going to cry and all the things, but I'm not going to talk about that. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Um, You know, I'm just, years ago, I I started blogging, um, a mom blog. And I really, it was just a place where I, it was kind of like a journal for myself. I just told funny stories about my kids because my kids, so I have one daughter, well, two daughters and three boys sandwiched in between. And my boys, like, I mean, people that know our family know that we have some crazy stories. Like my boys are just like boys, the things that they have gotten into (laughs) and just, so I would, write about just Mm -hmm. normal mom things. And I don't know, it just became a place where I could talk about things in my life that I would never tell to somebody one-on-one or even like admit about myself. It it was therapeutic. You're right. And through that process, I realized, you know what? Like people actually relate to real stories and authentic moments of life and not just, and it, it just it became a place for me to be honest in my walk with Christ and even share things about myself that were not good, Mm -hmm. but that God was working through in my life. And it just, I don't know, it just sort of led to a ministry within itself. And then that's what led me to write the book. And um, yeah. I love that. but And it is true that the more that you just put things out there and you start to want to glorify the Lord Mm -hmm. with your work. Mm -hmm. I believe that He blesses that because He did the same thing with me. I wanted to do a blog with my three best friends and I wanted one of them to talk about fashion and one to talk about (laughs) crafts. And then I was going to talk about the spiritual side of things. And then they looked at me and they're like, no, like <laughs> we don't want to do that. And yeah. the Lord said, oh, I told you to do it. Yeah. So you step yeah. out there and do it. And yeah. I did. And as I started to do it, I got more comfortable with it. And I could see that people were relating yeah. to the same things that I was writing about. I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. Right. But I am trying to walk out this faith journey, yes. putting one foot in front of the other. And that's yeah. exactly what you did, too. Yeah. No. And it just... 
it's just one day. It's just one day at a time, and you you do what's put in, in front of you, and you tell God's story through your life. Exactly. And you know, it allows people to just to just see. You know what, God, God really does change people. He really does work in people's life, and I think some of the the greatest evidence of that is us telling our stories and telling totally how agree. he's changed us and not just telling the good stuff, but telling all of it. Well, that is exactly what we're trying to do here yep. at the Reflecting Light Show. So that's a good little segue yes. into what I want to ask you. I know that you have an amazing story of adoption, uh, but I also wanted to ask you, Is there has there ever been a time in your life where you found yourself in a dark season and then you desperately needed the light to come into that situation and God showed up for you. Oh, wow. I could, well, I wrote a book about yeah, <laughs> all of those good. seasons, okay, but let's talk I could about tell it. a thousand stories. And I think he's still doing like today, like every day he's bringing me, you know, into the mm-hmm. light in some capacity. Um, but I, if I had to tell one, so we don't have, you know, yeah. forever. <laughs> Um, I would probably take it back to the point in my life where I first desired for him to like show me the light because I lived. So just kind of backstory, I grew up in the church, amazing family. Mom and dad just really instilled the love of Christ in me. And I loved, I loved God from a very young age, but I also was a perfectionist. And because I was a perfectionist, my life for many, many years was lived for how others perceived me. Mm-hmm. I was so concerned with not only my ex- physical external appearance, but but with the way everybody around me viewed me. And I wanted them to see me in this perfect light. And so if you're a perfectionist, then you have to develop a pattern of hiding because in order for, for you to see me as perfect, then I've got to portray myself as that way. And so that means I have to cover and hide anything about me that isn't perfect. That makes sense. And so without realizing it, I developed that habit. Just cover and hide anything you don't think looks good, would be perceived good. And without knowing it, I developed that habit. Well, as a young wife and mother, those habits don't work too well in right. marriage. <laughs> and so I struggled deeply with jealousy, although I would have never admitted it, even saying it now. It's like, who wants to admit that, right? right. I struggle with jealousy. I struggle with discontentment, just all sorts of things, which I talk about in the book. But to myself, I was perfect. I didn't see any of that in myself. And I'll never forget, there was a, a moment, Zach and I were in the car and we were fighting. And it was the most ridiculous fight. It's embarrassing to tell this story, but I'm going to tell it because it just, it's part of my story. We were fighting. I was accusing him of checking out some girl that was prettier. What I mean, it's so stupid. Like I I was 27, 28 years old. And he looks at me and he's like, you know, we're we're parked. We'd pulled in the driveway and we'd turned the car off. Bear was an infant and he was in the backseat asleep. And I don't know where my other kids were. (laughs) But I just remember him being in the back seat, and he looks at me and he says, Jill, you know what? He said, I'm I'm out there trying to be this godly husband, trying to lead you in the right way, and you're constantly accusing me of this and that. He's like, I might as well just be that person. If that's who you're going to think I am, I might as well just be that person. And Which I'm not (laughs) condoning that statement, (laughs) but I will say it just... I just stopped. It was like this wake-up call. Mm -hmm. It was... I remember just like pausing... And I got Bear out of his car seat and I put him in his bed and I went in my room and I went into my closet. And for the first time in my life, I just fell on my knees before the Lord. Mm. And I began to pray, God, you've got to show me what's wrong with me. It was like the first time in my life I wasn't looking at you're doing this wrong and this is what's wrong with you and they and they. I was like, God, you've got to show me what's wrong with me. It was like my David moment. Like I think it's Psalm 139 when he's like, you know, search me and know me, yeah. God, and point out all of my anxious ways. And I that's what I was asking him to do. Like, I need for you to show me. And that will forever be the turning point in my faith. Because okay. when you, like, the thing about God leading into, you into the light, He's always leading you into the light. But, but you can keep the blinders on if you that's choose right. to. You don't have to <laughs> see it. And it was me saying, okay, God, I want to see it. 
even if it's ugly, even if it means I have to admit some of these things about myself that are just uh, that nobody Mm -hmm. wants to admit. I want to see and I want to know because I want to be different. And that was a turning point. And that's so good. And so then how did you start to live after that? So, so I began, I actually began a journal that day and it started with just, I I started specifically praying for jealousy because at that point I did see that in myself. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, God, like, I need you to change this in me. And I would journal every day about that. And I mean it months and months. And I start to begin to see that he was like changing me. The the prayer was like, he was really doing doing the work. And the cool thing is when you start to see God work in your life, it makes you want more. I agree. Yeah. And so the two things I held held on to during that time period, which I would say are the same. They're they're kind of my go to scriptures, my anthem scriptures for life. I feel like they're two of the most powerful scriptures as far as transforming our lives. Mm -hmm. The first one is in John 16 verse 13, I think, or it may be John 13, verse 16. One of those, yeah. fact check yeah. me. But Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's telling them that he has to go. Mm-hmm. And they're like, wait, what? And he's like, no, you want me to go because if I don't go, then the Holy Spirit can't come. Exactly. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he said, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He won't tell you what he hears, but he will tell you what is spoken to him. In other words, he's going to tell you the truth from God the Father. He's going to yeah. speak to you what is true. And I thought, man, I want you to keep telling me what is true because that's I know good. if I hear what is true, that's going to lead me to more freedom, which is my next favorite yeah. verse, which is in 2 Corinthians three seventeen. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Good. And we all with unveiled faces are being transformed as in a mirror into His image from glory to glory. Mm-hmm. And so it's like this picture of, of understanding and really believing, God, if you're telling me the truth, and to the extent that I believe that truth, even if it's painful, right. even if it's good, bad, or in between, to the extent that I'm willing to say, I believe you, it's going to lead me to more freedom. Yes. To less anxiety, Mm -hmm. to more joy, to more, to experiencing more of Him and to growing more into His image. And I'm like, that's where I want to be. That's beautiful. And as you were talking, I was thinking about how personal our God is. And whenever He said, I will lead you into truth. Well, I mean, He was dealing specifically with Jill in that moment. Yes. Just like He has dealt specifically with me, with April, in my moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And He will do it for anybody who wants to come and receive that. And so as we start to move along in that vein, then we, we, we can start to walk in freedom. And we can start to be the people, the women that God has called us to be, which is so freeing, which is great. You know, which allows us to love our husbands like we're supposed to be the mom that we need to be or the sister or Mm -hmm. the aunt or, you know, whatever God has in store for us. But it starts with us listening to the voice of truth and reacting to it. Yeah, absolutely. And And it takes the pressure off of ourselves. You know, as moms and wife and women, I feel like one of our greatest struggles is we feel like we have to bear the weight of Absolutely. it all. Yeah. We've got to do mm-hmm. it all. We've mm-hmm. got to look the part and act the part and, and the house looks great and the this. And yeah. we've got to do all the things. And if you believe these scriptures, you're understanding, no, you don't. The only thing you have to do is to believe what God's telling you. That's right. And if you believe that and you follow in the vein of the Holy Spirit, you're going to experience freedom, joy, peace, patience, That's kindness. Right. like. It's the fruit of Him. That's what's called fruit of the Spirit is exactly. the fruit. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that people don't really understand that or accept that because they feel like, well, if, I, if I'm to do that, if I'm to follow Christ, then I'm going to lead this stuffy life. I'm not going to oh. get to do anything fun anymore. Yeah. And they don't understand no. the freedom that is on the other side and how how much that they can have that life of abundance. Oh, my goodness. That is so true. I can't tell you like how you can't describe it with words unless mm-hmm. you've experienced it. Like That's when good. you experience your life being transformed by the Holy Spirit, like 
you want more of it. You do. And you want more of it and more, mm-hmm. and, and your relationships change, your marriage changes. Your, I mean, it's just like, but you can't, I can't tell someone else that they have to taste and see that he's good and okay. they have to experience it, but they can see it in our lives, right? you know? And so that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book, why you share, you know, your testimony yeah. is mm-hmm. because that's the way that other people can see, hey, this is real. That's and great. if and if this girl talking about myself who was so shallow, I was so shallow. I was so focused on the external that it just like to see myself at that point in life, I would just I, I can look back and, and just be like, oh yeah. But people in my life, they they've seen that transformation. Mm-hmm. And it's not me, it's it's literally the Lord yes. in me. And yeah. so that's why I think it's so important that we we share our testimonies. Me too. When you asked me to come on this podcast and I was reading over the notes, when I was thinking about this idea of you asked being brought into the light, I thought of that scripture in 1 Peter 2, I think it's mm-hmm. verse 9, where God is saying you're a royal, yes. you're a chosen priesthood. nation, a royal priesthood. A pe- I'm, I'm totally messing it up. But the point is he's saying you're my people yes. and I called you out of darkness into his marvelous light mm-hmm. so that you may proclaim his excellencies. Right. That's so right. like that that's what we're doing here and in our lives. Right. That's the whole reason. Yeah. That's the whole reason. That's right. Okay, we're going to take a short break and then when we come back, we're going to jump into a little bit more of your story. Okay. We would like to thank today's sponsor of the Reflecting Light show, Central Oil and Supply. Central Oil and Supply offers the sale of wholesale petroleum, and they believe that it is not just their job, but also their heritage to deliver quality products and services. You can visit their website at central-oil.com. Hello, and welcome back to the Reflecting Light Show. We are visiting with Jill Dasher. She is the author of Shallow, and you have been telling us a lot about your story about why you wrote the book, Shallow. Uh, But before we kind of end on that, I want to circle back around to part of your story, which I love. And that is the fact that the Lord brought you and Zach into an unlikely adoption uh, story of becoming parents. Like your kids are are growing up. They're, They're almost done like yeah. you're you're yeah. out of the we weeds and then <laughs> the lord brings you a baby so tell yes. us that story okay this zach zach always is like when someone asks jill to tell the story of ruth just hold on because i tell like <laughs> i'm gonna give you up. every detail so I'm, I'm skipping a ton of details just so you know this is an incredible yeah. god story um but so yes so i have five kids my oldest is 18 16, 14, 11, and one. <laughs> so the one, the one-year-old, her name is Ruth Harvest Dasher. Um, crazy God story. When I was a young girl growing up, some of my parents' best friends were foster parents. Okay. They were an amazing couple. They fostered well over 100 babies, and they would let me come over to their house a lot and help take care of the babies. I was a baby fanatic. I loved them. And so I just knew that that was what my life was going to mm-hmm. look like. We were, I was going to foster kids, and that was my plan. And they ended up adopting two of their foster children, which they were in Zach and I's wedding. And so fast forward, I marry Zach, amazing, amazing man of God. And I'm sure that he's going to be on board with my plan, because why would God lay that on my heart? And he sure. not, you know, <laughs> but oddly enough, he God didn't lay that on his heart. And I remember him saying something to the effect of, if God lays a baby on my doorstep, I will, I will definitely take, take it, that. you know, <laughs> and just be careful what you what say, you say and right. what you pray for, because essentially that is what happened. I will just fast forward. I was, we were at a conference and. Zach was about to go up and speak, and I got a text on my phone from one of my mom's friends, and she said, can you talk? And I was a little bit concerned because it's not where we don't text very often. I said, sure. And she sends me this long text, and she's like, I just had a young girl reach out to me that wanted me to help her find a job so she could pay for an abortion. Would you be willing to talk to her? And and she asked me this because 
you know, my husband and I were involved with the children's home in North Carolina. We were foster parents at this point, which is another God story. And of course I said, sure, I, I would love to talk with her. And long story, long story short, this precious young mom in just a really rough situation ended up asking if Zach and I would adopt her child. And wow. so we're like, yes, <laughs> we will. And Zach was, it was such a, I mean, he was from the very beginning, like 100% yes. I'm wow. Good. And this sweet girl was born on Easter Sunday a year ago, 13 weeks early, mm -hmm. completely unresponsive. They, they yeah. resuscitated her back to life on Easter Sunday, two pounds, seven ounces. Goodness. And I mean, God's hand has been in this story in ways that I cannot even describe mm -hmm. with words. It's yeah. been... It's been so fun. Yeah. So yeah, so we're starting over. <laughs> we we are like Zach. Sometimes it's like this is a young man's yeah. game, but she is just she is just a ball of joy. What did your other four kids think? I mean, I, you had built-in babysitters, so oh, that was yes. great. Yes. Yeah. So you know, it was they were all on board with it and super excited. But you know, when she was born, she was in the NICU for almost seven weeks. So, and Goodness. this was during COVID. So for yeah. seven weeks, they had a baby sister that they couldn't see, couldn't mm -hmm. touch, couldn't talk to. And so it was a surreal moment that day because only Zach and I were allowed to be okay. in the NICU with her. And so it was a very s surreal moment of pulling into our driveway and bringing their four pound baby sister, she was four pounds at this point, into the house. And I mean, I've, I cannot tell this part without mm -hmm. crying, but they just surrounded her in the most beautiful way. And man, they, it has just been a picture of God, like the way they get to love her and care mm -hmm. for her. They, they're obsessed with her. <laughs> You're going to make me cry. Yeah, I'm it is just it. a sweet, it's a sweet, mm -hmm. it's just a sweet God story. Yeah. It's what he does. Yeah. But so they, they're, they're, I mean, she has them all wrapped. Yeah. And it makes me think about the fact that the Lord set that up from oh. the beginning of time. And he knew that she was to come into your lives. And yes. even though your husband was like, no, no. not doing that, mm -mm. Um, it literally was placed at your doorstep and y'all opened up your arms with compassion and love her. And so she, I mean, like she's usually everywhere that yes. you guys go. I fully expected her to be yes, here today. She, yeah. Yeah. It's actually <laughs> surprising like, that she's not. Yeah. But she <laughs> has sat behind many a podcast. Yes. Yes. She's, she's a lot so louder so now. She's yeah. <laughs> so fun. Well, and, and that just goes to show you that the Lord is in control mm -hmm. of every single thing and he's just going to bring it to fruition in his time. And he did. hundred percent. And he's going to do it in a way that you don't even think to ask for. <laughs> right. Because that's just, we can't even comprehend, you know, yes. his mercies and his yeah. grace and the way that, and the big picture that he sees. And so I love, like, I've done a timeline of just, of this particular story for the sheer purpose of seeing how God planted a seed in me mm -hmm. that he knew was not going to be planted or watered until 30 plus years down the yeah. road. Yeah. And it's like we're right. we're such we're such instant gratification people that we can't see the beauty in the waiting because we've been trained to be so I need it now. Yes. And I, and I Ruth's story, if I would have gotten Ruth at any other time, it would not have been mm -hmm. the time. That's right. You know? That's right. So. so what does life look like for you now as a mom who's a writer and you know just putting you one of your kids in college and being a mentor and, you know, just trying to do all the things. And then you have this baby. <laughs> so, how, how are you getting it all done? It is, well, I don't, I don't yeah. get it all done. And that's my first realization yeah. is that like my expectation list, I just kind of have to cut it down. Yeah. And I really am in a season of my life of having to, and this is something that's difficult to me for me because I'm a yes person. I love mm -hmm. to say yes. I have a hard time saying no. And I really do want to have my hands in everything yes. I can, um, especially if it's kingdom, which yes. I believe everything is kingdom work. But mm -hmm. um, so, but I really am in a season of having to dial back 
my yeses yeah. to be intentional with Ruth because I, I do want to give her that intentionality that I gave, sure. you know, the other four. And so it's just having to balance the yeses and, and the the time with my, my intimate family. And so, you know, it's a, and I don't always do it right. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, oh, I can handle more. And then sometimes it's like, I need to dial it back. Yeah. And so, yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about Shallow and how everybody can find your book. Yes. Okay, Shallow, you can go to my website, jilldasher.com. You can get it there. And I'll give you a code that we can use. Wonderful. Um, you can put it okay, on the Okay, good. I'll put it in the show notes. And then, but you can also get it on Amazon. So, um, and Shallow, Drowning in the Shallow and of People's Approval, it's just that. It's, it's my life story of how living for what other people thought affected my friendships, my mm-hmm. marriage, my relationship with Christ. And it's just this story of allowing Him to expose me to myself. Yeah. And that led to freedom. Yes. See, when, when God exposes, He doesn't expose the way the world does. Like mm-hmm. the world exposes to point at you for sh- to like make you feel shame. Right. It's like the mean girls, you know, in mm-hmm. the room that are whispering about you. You know, yes. God's not that way. He exposes to resurrect and change your life, that's and so, so well that's said. what shallow yeah. is. And I, I never want Him to stop exposing me. Yeah, um, and I think that that message is so timely, and it goes back to what we're trying to do within the LO community too, yes. is to tell these young girls that there is a better way that mm-hmm. you don't have to. Be perfect, that you can lay down that perfection, that God just wants your heart and yeah. He wants to expose those things because He wants you to be the best version of who you can be. Exactly. That's perfect. All right. So I have one last question for you, Jill. What is one thing that is lightening your load these days? Well, literally, literally, I would say I have the most precious lady that comes and does my laundry. (laughs) And it is a guilty pleasure that that sounds wonderful. (laughs) Is literally changing my life. Yeah. I am I'm I am terrible with laundry. Mm -hmm. I have five kids and and we my laundry room is not pretty. It doesn't look like Pinterest. It's like a hot, disgusting mess. (laughs) But when my sweet this sweet precious lady that came into my life, she makes that room like magical and she folds everything like perfectly and it's just like I sometimes I just walk in there and I'm like my laundry is done I just want to sit here and it is it is the (laughs) best gift that's so wonderful I love that that's just the truth I wish that I had that in my life. Maybe, I, maybe that could, you, I could find somebody in that I'm with that in my life. It'll change your life. Yes. Well, thank you for coming on the Reflecting Light of Show. Course. You are such a beautiful light, and you do shine for Him. So thank I appreciate you. you. Yes. Thank you for tuning in to the Reflecting Light Show. We pray you got some hope and some light out of today's episode. And if you did, please subscribe to the show and also share with a friend who may need the light of Jesus Christ in his or her life. If you haven't gotten your copy of Made to Shine, you can do so by going to aprilrogers.com. Go out and have a great week and be the light.